Hey Android fans, it's Eric with HollywoodFroto.com uh, with another Android app review. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the most fundamental things you use with any smartphone and that's your keyboard. Uh, most of us don't uh, love the built-in Android keyboard. I don't know about ice cream sandwich because I don't have that yet, but to date the Android keyboard, it's okay. but. There are lots of other options out on the market uh, that are better. And the one that I have found to be the best is Swift Key X. Um, I've tried them all, uh, most of the big ones. Uh, yes, I've tried Swipe. And I know that there is a, a lot of hype about Swipe. A lot of people swear by it. Um, I found that overall, Swipe did not help me type any faster. And often, it uh, took longer for me to use swipe because I would swipe through a sentence really fast but then I'd get to the end of it and half the words would be wrong so then I'd spend you know 20-30 seconds going back into what I had just typed and correcting the words so for me uh, Swift Key X is the fastest I've also tried uh, I've had Flex T9 I've had TouchPal keyboard uh, I'm not going to say any of those are bad a lot of it's personal preference, of course, and if you've never tried uh, a swipe keyboard, then it's, it's worth giving it a try. Um, but I'm pretty sure that uh, putting me up against somebody else who has swipe with uh, Swift Key X, that I could finish the same uh, text faster than them. Um, they may initially get through it faster, but by the time they correct the errors, I think I would probably be done and, and correct. Um, just for me personally, SwiftKey X is absolutely the best. Um, originally it started off with SwiftKey, and then they uh, updated it to SwiftKey X. So they've been continually working on it and improving it, uh, making it better. And uh, it's a really uh, great, um, great keyboard. So let's, uh, let's take a look at it, and I'll show you how it works and all the configurations uh, that you have with it, and uh, see if it's something you want to give a try. Okay, so here you see my Swift Key X keyboard. Um, looking at it, I know you're probably thinking, wow, that's the coolest looking keyboard I've ever seen. That's just one of the skins that you can choose. It comes with four possible skins, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but it's uh, this is one of them, and I really do think it's one of the coolest. Um, this predates Ice Cream Sandwich, believe it or not. Although uh, I'm sure a lot of people look at it and think, "Oh, that looks like it would be an Ice Cream Sandwich theme," but uh, Swift Key was a little bit ahead of the game on this one, and so I've had this keyboard, uh, this particular skin, uh, for a good while, and I do think it's one of the coolest looking of any keyboards. Um, so as you can see, the keyboard layout is fairly typical QWERTY keyboard layout um, with your numbers across the top which you can get by long pressing and then the special characters above the other keys which also you get from long pressing. Now what makes Swift Key X so amazing to me is its predictions. Um, it's set to predict what you're going to type before you even type it. So if I was about to start a sentence that started with I, as you can see I is already there. And then it also has a couple of other ideas of what it thinks I might be about to say. And as you type, it predicts what your next word is going to be. Um, because, let's face it, if you were to go through and read the last, you know, the, the text messages you sent for the last week, you'd find out that you're using a lot of the same sentences, phrases, and words over and over and over again. Swift Key X learns as you type. Uh, when you first install it, you can uh, have it uh, uh, check your your Gmail, your text messages, your Facebook, your Twitter, RSS feeds if you have a blog to kind of learn your pattern, your, your words and your uh, speech pattern. But uh, even without that, as you use it, it, it learns. So let's see, I'm going to type a sentence. Uh, I'm about to go to the store. I, oh, Am's already there. Am, now it's about right about right there if I wanted I could just click it to go to the 
store, period. There you go. So you see I typed that sentence with only pressing, what, maybe seven or eight keys because it's always trying to predict what you're what you're going to say. And even if, you know, what it has next isn't what you're going to say, as you type, it's continually trying to predict. Um, there's different ways you can set it up to insert the prediction. Obviously, if you tap the prediction, it goes in. But you can also set it up, as I have it set up right now, um, so that when I hit the space bar, the middle prediction goes in. So let's type, I need to buy some milk. I need, I'm just going to hit space bar and inserts it. Two is already there. I'm going to say that. Buy. I'm going to tap buy. Some, I'm just going to hit space bar. It's going to insert it. Milk. Oh, I didn't spash. Some milk. And milk is there. I'm going to hit that. And it's already got a period over here, so I'll hit that. So that's why it's fast. And of course, if you're using two hands and um, you're not typing around a camera like I am right now, you can see how you can get pretty fast with it so that, you know, you don't even have to type, uh, type out your words. And that's one of the reasons why it's so fast. And that's one of the reasons why um, I like it better than swipe. Um, so that's basically how it works. Um, another cool feature is it does have voice input. I'm going to show you how that works. If you long press, this is a swift key key. You can use it to open settings. Uh, if you just tap it, that's not it. If you just tap it, it gives you a menu. But if you long press it, it automatically will go to... I am going to the store, period. I need to buy some milk, period. What I like about it is this. It realizes that... Google Voice predictions, because obviously that information gets sent to Google and there's what Google thinks you say gets sent back, may not always be exactly right. So it sends back three or four possibilities so you can choose the best one. Um, more times than not, especially if you're speaking clearly and not in a noisy environment, the first one's going to be correct. As here, I'm going to the store, I need to buy some milk. But if for some reason... Maybe you had a word that could be mis easily misunderstood as, a, as another word. 99% uh, of the time, it's going to be correct in one of these choices. And so that's what it, I, I love. It makes using your voice to insert text a lot faster as well um, because you don't have to worry so much that it's going to send back a wrong response and you're going to have to do it all over. Most of the time, one of the responses is going to be correct. Also, if you need numbers... You hit the number board and then you get your sort of calculator style numbers with all your numbers right here and special characters over here. So it's good to use if you're uh, inserting like a phone number or something that's a lot of numbers. And then to capitalize, you just hit the caps key. Um, pretty typical as all keyboards. If you hit it twice, then caps stay on until you hit it to take them off. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's look at the settings real quick because that's they do have a lot of settings that are kind of cool. Um, obviously, you have languages, uh, different languages. These are the different languages you can use. Um, since I'm in the U.S. and I speak English, I'm going to stick with English. Um, personalization. Now, this is the key. This is where you can have it learn from Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, your RSV. RSS feed, SMS, basically you would you give it the uh, ability to log into your account and to read all of your messages. Um, I know a lot of people may not like that. You don't have to use that. Like I said, if you don't do any of that, it'll still learn as you type. But I went ahead and let it do that. As you can see, it successfully learned from my Facebook on December 10th, successfully learned from my Gmail on February 16th. Um, of course, by now I've used it so much that it's learned a lot more just from me using it. So that's how you allow it to personalize theme. These are the different themes you have. You can see here you have typical choices, which is black keys with white writing, white keys with black writing, and then neon, which is the one I use, and then pumpkin, uh, which is orange. Um, and although orange is my favorite color, the, I like the style of the neon better, uh, not just the colors, but the way that it has a little line around the keys. 
like I said, I've, I've tried, there was some other keyboard I used recently, I can't remember what it was, it's one of the popular ones, and it has like a gazillion skins that come with it, and then others you can download from the market, but none of them look near as good as the one I have. Show foreign characters, if you want uh, a long press on a key to open up a little box of foreign characters, you can have that, since I don't use those that much, I don't have that. Um, and then if you want arrow keys uh, on there, you can have arrow keys. Um, I don't need that because I have a, a little thing, an optical thing down here that I can use for arrow keys on my keyboard. Uh, but if you need arrow, arrow keys, you can have those on there. Um, and then advanced, this is where it gets really cool. Typing style. This is based on how you type, either precise or rapid. Precise. This is if you use predictions a lot, and you saw me when I was typing. I'm, I'm, as I'm typing, I'm constantly looking at the predictions and often using those. Some people don't want to worry about predictions. You just want to type. You just want to type your word space, type your word space, type your word space, type your word space. And uh, but when you're doing that, you might get words wrong a lot. Well, rapid is for those people, and what that does, it allows you to type fast, get words you know, misspell or mishit words, but SwiftKey will use not only its spelling correction, but also its prediction ability to know what you meant to type and to make sure it gets entered correctly. So it just is two different styles, and you can set it based on the way you type, and you could try one and try the other to see which one works best for you. But since I use predictions a lot and find that to be the fastest way for me to type and, and, and get uh, get my sentences out, I use precise. Um, you can just set how you want the space bar to operate, whether you want it to enter a space wherever you are when you hit it, or whether you want it to complete the current word you're working on, or if you want it to insert a prediction. I have it set to always insert a prediction, in which case it always inserts that middle prediction. Um, this is grayed out because it's not usable with that mode, but if you set spacebar to complete the current word, then you can also set so that if you space twice, it adds a period um, automatically. Generally speaking, though, uh, SwiftKey is good at knowing when you're at the end of a sentence and having a period as your prediction, so it's pretty fast to do it that way. Uh, auto caps. Again, typical setting in any keyboard, so that at the end of after a period, it'll automatically capitalize the next word. Um, voice recognition, you can turn that off if you don't want the voice recognition key to be on there. Again, I showed you how awesome it is, though, so I don't know why you wouldn't want it on there. Um, long press duration, I love that it has this option. You can set how long do you need to press a key to bring up the uh, uh, either the number or the alternate character. Uh, I have mine set really low. Because when I'm typing, I'm just barely tapping letters. If I hold something for any length of time at all, it's because I want a long press. And a lot of times with some keyboards, you have to long press what seems like forever, especially if you are trying to type fast. So I have my long press set really low so that I don't have to hold it long at all. And then gestures uh, enables a couple of gestures. Uh, I didn't sh I'll show you show you them when we're back in the keyboard. One is gesturing from right to left, which deletes uh, the last word, and one is from top to bottom, which minimizes the keyboard. And then the sensitivity, that's just how far you have to gesture across to make that happen. Portrait key height and landscape key height, I have mine set to normal. As you saw on my keyboard, it's pretty standard. But you can make either the height or the width um, uh, smaller or bigger. So if you want uh, to play around with that, if you have large hands, you might need a slightly larger keyboard. Um, if you have really tiny hobbit hands, you may want a small keyboard. I don't really know why anyone would want a smaller keyboard. Keyboards are small enough as it is. But if you want it, you can have it. And that's the uh, advance, and that's pretty much it. Um, the statistics are kind of cool. It just shows how your efficiency is. like. You know, how many words have they predicted for me? They've predicted 1,633. How many typos have been corrected? 8,357. How many words completed? You know, it's not important, but it's it's kind of cool to look at that. My typing heat map shows a heat map of where you normally hit keys, so how accurate your typing is. Um, if you want to look at that, you can.
Uh, so anyway, let me show you how the swiping goes. See, we're at milk. If I swipe across the board, it takes away the period. Now, if I swipe again, it takes away the word milk. Swiping again, type away the next word. Next word. It just takes away the next word. And so it's it's great. It's an easy way. You don't have to like sit there and hold the correct button down. You can just swipe across, and it just swipes away the word. So it's really quick, easy way to uh, delete something if you need to. Um, and that's pretty much it with Swift Key. Uh, like I said, it's one of the most basic things you use with your phone uh, as a keyboard, and it's important to have a good one. And I think this one is definitely one of the best. So that's my review of the Swift Key X. Um, again, I think it's the best keyboard uh, available for Android. I've tried Swipe, I've tried uh, Flex T9, which offers swiping capability, um, typing capability, using your finger to draw letters capability, and that's kind of cool, but again, not near as fast. I tried Touch File Keyboard, which try, sort of integrates swipe with a little bit of the predictability of Swift Key. Um, and it's a good keyboard, but again, uh, none of those to me were near as fast, allow me to type uh, as quickly and as accurately as Swift Key X. So I would highly recommend it. Um, you can get it uh, through the Amazon app uh, market or the uh, Google Play uh, Android market. Um, anyway, this is Eric with HollywoodFrodo.com. Uh, if you have any questions about SwiftKey, I think I covered everything. But if you have a question, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment below the video. And check out my other reviews. You can hit the subscribe button um, to, to see upcoming reviews. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next time.